Okay, now one of the nice features about WPS is the way it integrates with WCN or Windows Connect Now, which is the feature that we were using before to move security credentials from one machine to another using a flash drive. Using the Windows Connect Now features built into Windows Vista, Service Pack 2 or above, or Windows 7, we can also switch roles with the router. And instead of the router being the registrar and the computer being the enrollee, using Windows Connect Now, we can become the registrar and actually configure the router remotely without having to log on to it. We can then take those settings, place them on a flash drive, and use that flash drive to configure all our non-UPS clients. But in order for us to do that, our router must be in what's called non-configured mode. So what does that mean? Once you set your router up and it has a network name, security encryption, and passphrase, it is now in configured mode. Now what configured mode means is those settings are pretty much set in stone. When a router is in configured mode, this means that no external registrar with WPS or Windows Connect Now capabilities can reconfigure that router. That router can only be reconfigured by manually logging on to it and resetting it or manually changing the settings. Okay, now there's an interesting way to spot an unconfigured WPS router from across the network. Let's go into Networking Sharing Center. And let's take a look at our network. Okay, now as we can see, we have just a few computers on here and multiple wireless routers. The wireless router that we're concerned about right now is this Linksys here. Okay, now we're going to go over to the router and then we're going to reset this configuration back to the factory defaults. So we go to administration, factory defaults, and say yes. We want to restore to the factory defaults. Alright, so we're going to have to wait a few seconds for this to reboot itself. And then the page should come back to us. Okay, so let's go back into our wireless section and see what's happened. Okay, we can see from looking at the router that everything has been restored and we are now in unconfigured mode. So let's go back to Networking Sharing Center and see how that looks. Now you see a difference. Here's the router that we're talking about. Now if we were to right click on this, it would let us right into the device web page. But we're already there. So what I wanted to show you is this right here. This little, little device with an antenna on it. What this means is we now have an unconfigured wireless device on our network and if we were to click on this it would ask us for the pin okay now since this wizard really doesn't have any real configuration capabilities we're gonna go somewhere else first thing okay so the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we have a wireless connection to this router and since this router was recently reset to its factory defaults it should now have an SSID of Linksys so we can see we are connected to the Linksys router wirelessly. Of course, we don't want to leave it in that state because it's totally unsecure. So the next thing we do is go to set up a connection or network. And we say set up a wireless router or access point. Click next. Click next. Next, we give our wireless network a name. So now what it's saying is it's saying it's automatically generated a WPA security key for us. Now if we want, we can boost this up to WPA2, which is more secure, by simply clicking on WPA2. Click Next. So now it's asking for the router's pin. Where's the router's pin? In the case of this router, all I have to do is turn it over and copy it in.
Now for the purposes of this demonstration, we'll leave these settings as they are. So now what it's done is it's created a network with the name Ding Dong and given it the following passphrase. So let's see if this has actually made any changes to our router. I'm going to hit refresh here real quick. And we can see our status has changed from unconfigured to configured with the name, the security we chose, and the passphrase that was automatically generated by Windows Vista. So what we've done here is we've actually set up security on our router without actually having to log on to our router at all. So what's the next step? Next, it's offering us the opportunity to put these settings on a USB flash drive. Now, why would we want to do this if we're using Wi-Fi protected setup? Well, it could be that some of our systems do not support WPS, and we can still use our handy-dandy USB flash drive to set those systems up. So let's go ahead and select Save Settings to USB Flash Drive. And I do believe that we do have a flash drive plugged into G. Click Next. All right, now, remember, if you hit Close, there's a good chance you're going to delete what you just copied to the flash drive. Let's take a peek at the flash drive real quick and see exactly where that setting is. we go into this folder here, this is where these settings were placed. And we can always do this just as a means of double checking or, or for troubleshooting in case something doesn't work. Well there we have it. There's the network we just created, ding dong, and there's our key and the encryption type that we chose. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull that USB drive out then we're going to go over to a Windows 7 computer and we're going to simply pop this drive in and configure that computer to join our Ding Dong network.